This video is dedicated in remembrance to the late Bernard Cribbins, or Mr. Perks. Ah, the railway children. That film I used to skip forward on the VHS just to watch the train bits. But now that I'm an older railway child, I've gone back and rewatched, and I can understand why it's in the BFI's top 100 British films of all time. It's incredibly British, incredibly slow paced compared to media nowadays, and incredibly self aware that it's focusing on a slower pace of life. It earns its favouritism for its personality. In 2022, just over 50 years since the original, one of the Railway Children returns in a sequel called The Railway Children Return. Though time has moved on, its creators have done their best to pay respects to the Lionel Jeffries 1970 release. But anyway, we're not here to review or spoil the films today, just to show you that the idyllic English countryside that they're filmed in is very much real and not a fabricated film set. The main setting is the line now preserved for the public as the Keithley and Worth Valley Railway in West Yorkshire, in the little village of Oakworth. Volunteers at the time persuaded Lionel Jeffries to keep the original station name, and this did a world of good for publicity. As to why this line was chosen at all, well, it had already gained a good track record. Two years earlier, with trains only just beginning to be run by volunteers, the railway was used for a TV series adaptation of Edith Nesbitt's book by the BBC. Jenny Agutter, who played Bobby, returned to the role in the 1970 film, and as the mother in the 1999 ITV adaptation, and as Bobby again in the 2022 sequel. She must really like the role. Since it's been so lovingly preserved, you too can visit Oakworth Station and walk in the steps of the actors in a view that has hardly changed. Mr. Perk's crossing gates are still manually opened. The platform is still lit by gas lamps, and I dare say, I dare say, the cars parked outside are the only sign that we're in a different era. Now, something we didn't realise at the time, because we didn't need to go, but the ladies' waiting room is open to everyone as a display for the station's history. Outside, a hut in the goods yard now offers refreshments, near to where the whitewashed coal pile was that Peter stole from. Oh, Peter. Oh, Pete. Pete. As for the sequel, a lot of the action happens within the yard itself. To show this, Abe's hideout has been left as it looked in the film, complete with World War II props and information signs. The railway now offers guided tours of the station and yard too. People around us were surprised that you could look around a genuine film set so freely, until they realised that it's actually a real genuine brake van preserved by the railway, and not just set dressing. What is a trick of the camera, however, is Oakworth itself, for it's actually Haworth Village that is used in the films. A steep 15 minute walk up from the railway's Haworth station takes you to the cobbled high street, where the children wander around to collect Mr. Perk's birthday presents. In the sequel, these same streets are used again as the local pubs that get raided by the US Army, inspired by the Battle of Bamba Bridge. through the alleyway to the church, takes you to the old post office and general store, and then on to the graveyard seen throughout both films.
The school opposite is where the evacuees of the sequel get distributed to their new temporary homes. And adjacent to this is the doctor's house. We paid a visit to the Bronte Parsonage house, where Charlotte, Emily and Anne Bronte all lived and wrote such famous works as Jane Eyre, Wuthering Heights and The Tenant of Wildfell Hall. Well worth a visit in itself, simply to see how well maintained the astonishing collection of artefacts are. What we were blown away to have discovered is that the Bronte house is the doctor's house from the railway children. It's where the children of the sequel live and it's seen continuously in both films. The school was actually established by the Bronte family and a plaque within the church itself marks the spot where they're now buried. What a perfectly strange combination of the Bronte sisters and Edith Nesbitt. Literary icons in their own right, or writing. Speaking of houses, Three Chimneys House, where the first railway children live, is actually Bent's Farm in Oxenhope, which is a private residence, so not as easy to visit. Going back to the railway, at just five miles between Keithley and Oxenhope, the film crews deceptively made some of the locations seem further apart than they really were. Mythome's tunnel between Oakworth and Haworth is where most of the remaining scenes were filmed. The northern portal is where the children famously sit and wave to trains passing by. And the tunnel itself is of course where they run into to rescue the injured boy. This is also used again in The Railway Children Return. The tunnel is obviously where the landslide was also staged, before the children run to flag the train down. Further afield, the station used at the start of the sequel to act as Manchester is actually Keithley Station. So in reality, it wasn't a very long journey to escape the bombs. Although it appears as if it's in the middle of the line, the crossing used to halt the train is at Damem Station, which the railway pride themselves in calling the smallest working passenger station in the country. As for the trains themselves, it's all genuine rolling stock that's used on set. The engines used are Hudswell Clark number 67, now preserved at the Middleton Railway in Leeds. The Scots Flyer! The Scots Flyer is the N2 class, now preserved on the North Norfolk Railway. The main stars can still be found on the Keithley and Worth Valley. The Green Dragon is Class 25, number 957, recently returned to steam. And the main star is Great Western Pannier Tank, number 5775. It can now be found on display at the Exhibition Shed at Oxenhope Station. It's coupled with some of the coaches used too, including the privately owned Old Gentleman Saloon an ex-Northeastern Railway clerestory carriage. On the next track is one of the stars of The Railway Children Return, Fowler 4F number 43924, which was hastily redressed with its World War II accurate LMS number and initials. The US Army train is hauled by a genuine American loco, number 5820, an S160 class which is currently hauling trains. The other engine used randomly throughout is Jubilee Class number 45596 Bahamas, backdated to 5596, which is based on the railway with the Bahamas Locomotive Society, but is often used for tours on the UK mainline. Those are the main places you can visit if you want to immerse yourself in the Edwardian world of the railway children, and the World War II English countryside of the railway children return. The best way to see it all is by train, of course, and you can hop on and off at each station with a day rover ticket on the Keithley and Worth Valley. Oakworth and Haworth have limited parking, so it's best to start your day either at Oxenhope or Keithley stations. 
The Bronte Parsonage Museum is open Wednesdays to Sundays and all can be found in West Yorkshire. Please show your support to both attractions in the links below. And if you've enjoyed this video, then go on, give us a like. Maybe we'll be back to explore the filming locations of another British classic train film. Goodbye. Huge thanks to my brilliant patrons, Alex Goodman, GBH Train, D0280 Falcon, Sean Tempest, Nat, Sam Bennett, Alco, Henry Forrester, TR2000, and Random Thomas Fan.